Hi, and welcome back to program analysis. This is part five of this lecture on operational semantics. And what we're going to do in this fifth and final part of this lecture is to have a brief look at big step semantics. So this is the second style of structural operational semantics that we're going to discuss here. And we'll see how it is somewhat similar to small step semantics, but at the same time also pretty different. So now in the previous video, we've seen these um, small steps semantics. And what we've seen there is that we had to find this transition relation such that each transition, so each step in this relation corresponds to an individual step of computation. Now, in contrast, what we want to do here is to basically omit some more details and take bigger steps. That's why we have the name big step semantics, so that the transition relation now corresponds to the full evaluation of um, a piece of code. In order to do this, um, we again need to define a transition system and to keep things a little simpler. Fortunately, the configurations remain the same as before. So it's again a pair of a program and a store. But the evaluation relation um, is changing. So this is the new transition relation for this um, new transition system that we're defining here. And specific, specifically they change such that we now use this notation where we have a program and the store we start with. And then we use this down arrow notation here. It looks a bit like a smiley, but actually it's a down arrow, which leads us to a changed program P prime and a changed store S prime. The way you should read this is that this down arrow is read as evaluates to. And the result of this evaluation is the last configuration of the evaluation sequence of this program P given the store S if this program P terminates. So it's the last configuration of the evaluation sequence of this program P given the store S, assuming that P actually terminates. So in order to define this evaluation relation, I need to again give you the axioms and rules. Um, because we've now done this already twice for the abstract machine and for the small steps operational semantics, I'm not going to go through all the axioms and rules, but I just give a few representative examples here, and then I'll share the full set of axioms and rules um, with you afterwards. So let's start with one um, axiom that um, we've also seen in the small step semantics, and actually it looks very similar. It's the one that is used to read the value of some variables. So if you have some location or variable L and some store S, then this evaluates to N and S if the store maps L to N. So this is um, again the axiom to read variables. And as you um, can tell by comparing this to the previous axiom that we've seen in small step semantics, this is almost as before. So now given that this is almost as before, let's also have a look at some um, axioms and rules that actually change quite a bit. And as an example, let's here look at um, 
an axiom, uh, sorry, a rule that we are using to um, evaluate uh, an assignment. So if you have an assignment that looks like this, so we say we want to write into location L the value of evaluating this expression E, then we can evaluate this in one step to skip and an updated store S prime, which is further updated by mapping L to N under the condition that we have a way to actually evaluate E comma S to N and S prime. So note that there are potentially two updates of the store here, one in the precondition of this of this rule, where we're saying while evaluating the expression E, there might be an update to S prime. And then once we have evaluated E to the value N, we'll update the store again down here by taking this S prime and now also changing the mapping of L so that it now maps to N. So this rule um, is for assignments. And as you can tell, can tell by comparing it to the um, corresponding rules for small step semantics, this is actually much simpler because we here have only one rule instead of the two rules that we had before. And as a third example of a rule, um, let's have add the rule that allows us to evaluate a sequence of commands. So if we have a sequence C1 semicolon C2 and now want to evaluate this given some initial store S, then all of this can be evaluated in just a single step to skip with a new store S double prime under two conditions. One is that if we start with C1 and evaluate this given store S, then this evaluates to skip and a store S prime. And after that, we take C2 and evaluate this given this store S prime. And this then evaluates to skip with a change store S double prime. So as you can see, this basically allows us again to do something we have done in multiple steps um, with the small step semantics now in a single step, step because we are um, reducing this entire sequence of uh, commands in a single step to skip. Let me illustrate this um, using an example and you'll see more examples of this in the exercise. So let's again look at this program that swaps the value of um, two arguments where we are writing um, the value of x into z and then overwrite x with the value of y and then after that put the value of z oops, into y. And let's say we are um, doing this with an initial store where z is 0 and x is 1 and y is 2. So what we want to show here is that if we take this program P and this initial store S, then all of this evaluates to skip and a store S prime, where eventually S prime looks as follows. So Z at the end will map to one, X will map to two and Y will map to one. And now in order to do this, we need to show that you can take this one um, um, transition step. And in order to do this, we again have to construct a proof tree, which starts by showing that if we take our program P and evaluate it given store S, then this evaluates to skip and store S prime. Because the outermost um, command here is a sequence of commands, we can do this using the sequence rule. And in order to use that rule, we need to show two things, namely that the first statement that we have here um, evaluates to, um, to skip and changes the store. So in order to not repeat 
my writing here too much. Let's say we call this, sorry, only until here, p prime. And let's say we call this p double prime. Then we need to show that p prime starting in s evaluates to skip and leads to some store s double prime. And the second part of this sequence of um, commands, so p prime prime, if we start to evaluate this in s double prime, um, then this will evaluate also to skip and leads to the store s prime that um, we are using down in the conclusion. And now in order to show that we can actually draw these conclusions, we need to also again use some rules. Um, so p prime also consists of two statements itself, which means we need to use our sequence rule another time. And I'm not showing you all the details here. So I actually would like to invite you to try this out yourself. And if, if you have questions, then please ask in the exercise to, to resolve them. But essentially what this boils down to, just to give you a sketch of this proof tree, is that for the first um, command in the sequence, you'll have to use um, the assignment rule, which you have seen on the previous slide. And in order to use this assignment rule, you will have to use another rule which allows you to actually read the value of variable x. And this is the variable rule. And then on the other side of this subtree, it looks very similar because there's another, um, another assignment. So again, here, the assignment, assignment rule is used and then the variable rule is used to read the value of variable y. And then on the right-hand side of this entire tree, um, it again looks kind of similar, just that we do not need to use the sequence rule again, but we'll directly use the um, assignment rule here, which has some preconditions. And in order to show that these preconditions are actually um, true, we need to use the variable rule. All right, and that's already the end of video number five in this lecture on operational semantics. So you've now seen three ways to define the semantics of this simple language. One that is at a very low level um, where we define a hypothetical machine, this abstract machine specifically designed for this language and where we show very low level steps that help us to eventually determine the meaning of programs written in SIMP. And then we've gone up this ladder of abstraction by looking at small steps a small step operational semantics and then in this video also um, a little bit of big step operational semantics and each of these three ways of defining the semantics essentially yields the same result it tells you the meaning of programs in simp just in three different ways of uh, writing it down thank you very much for listening i hope you've learned something in this lecture and then see you next time <laughs>